Let's work into the totally awesome fishing show. This time I am off the Devon coastline in the UK. Wait for this, in a self-drive boat. I love it. You know me and boats, absolutely love it. Been too rough to get mine out and I really haven't caught much anyway, I've got to be perfectly honest. And then somebody told me about this place with self-drive boats. I thought, do you know what? It's a long drive, two and a half hour drive for me. But I'll give it a go, I'll give it a go. It's towards the end of the season in case anybody wants to know. But what a setting I've got here. Unbelievable setting. One thing I will say is, it's really weird for me. I can't, because I, I have a flat, not flat bottom, it's called a cathedral hull boat. It would be much more stable than this. Now these are really good sea boats, don't get me wrong, but I'm not used to that rocking and rolling motion, pitching all over the place from a V-hole. I'm used to having a cathedral hull boat. We get a bit of a battering going out, but when you go anchor, it barely moves. And that's why I, I, I've got my boat and I love it. Except for today, I'm trying another one. I'm, I'm cheating on a on high sea drifter. So what am I doing uh, fish wise? I've got to tell you guys, I'm just going to go for anything. I don't know the place, I don't know the area. The guy just pointed me in the right direction. So go over there and anchor up and you'll be okay. Uh, okay, whoa, yeah, I'll be okay, hopefully. Bought my own life jacket, now they come with life jackets, but they're in big bulky ones, you know, this is a, I think they call it a buoyancy aid. If I go over, I'm away with the fairies anyway, so let's not uh, worry about that too much. But if you want to wear one, wear one, but these are less restrictive. Now the boat, it has an inboard diesel engine here. It's, I think he said it was a 10 horsepower Yanmar diesel. And I've done a couple of films with uh, Hillary's, my wife's uncle, Old Uncle Brian had a Yanmar diesel on his, I think, and that was like, well, we call them Bob boats. Bob, 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 Bob. Totally different to my one, you know. Wow, screaming across the ocean. But hey ho, I'm out here. Well, I'm not even a mile offshore, am I? I'm three quarters of a mile, if that, not a half a mile, I'd say. And it's a 14 foot boat. It's on a traditional design. Obviously, it's not. It hasn't got rod holders, it's not a fishing boat, it's for people that go mackerel fishing and pleasure fishing, a bit of fun. Um, so they've got seats, plenty of seating. But I've, I started down here and do you know what? I find it easier if I sit up here because I'm so used to my boat is completely flat open deck, I know where everything is. I've got rod holders, so I'm not used to sort of having rods inside the boat. Mine are always up out of the way on holders. I've got to get used to not falling over the rod butts. I've got a mishmash of baits out there and everything. I'm going for small hooks down here, got a small hook rig. I've got some uh, heavy ones down here. This is just the old kanji rod, which you might have seen in other films. And I've got one standard boat rod on the right, a sort of medium light boat rod there. They've both got mackerel on, I've got squid. I've got some manky old rag here left over, some frozen stuff, so I've been pulling it on the hook and they tell me there might might be some small fish it might be a chance of late season black bream i'm going to give it a go the saying is boys you've got to be in it to win it i think i'll have a cup of tea and a sandwich first oh yeah and i'm also throwing some of this out let me show you i have to bring my bait with me you cannot risk you know coming and just thinking you're going to catch mackerel whoa i've been dropping this over this japanese or chinese whatever it is bait stuff. Let me put it this side. Might be able to see it. I've been putting it in the water every so often. I don't know what depth I've got here. Look there. I want to come back here and have a go with chum because it wouldn't surprise me there's an outside chance of something like a Paul Beagle shark. Because that's drifting away at a nice pace. You can just see a big cloud of it back there. Now that might bring small fish around. I don't know do I? Bream something like that but at least I'm trying. Uh, if I don't get any takes on the macro, I'm going to chop it up, drop that over as well, see if I can get a few bream, pouting. I don't know, might be the odd, well, I expect there's more than the odd dogfish around. So I'm trying to keep my better bait in there cool, and the manky mackerel is in there. I think given this setting, I'm probably going to enjoy the day on the sea, fresh air, anyway. Let's have a sandwich. Ow, it's first fish on, boys. First fish on. I just heard the reel pulling, I don't know what it is. Hammering bite, 
a fillet of mackerel and there's some worms down there, some ganky manky old worms. So will this be my first fish in the self-drive from Devon? It's going to be a Devon delight. I wonder if it's going to be a black bream. What is it going to be? Let's have a look. I wonder if it's on that mackerel strip. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh yes, black bream. A black bream and he's taken, actually, look, not a big fish. Wow. Do you know, I'm pleased with that because it's so nice to come out somewhere you've never fished before and catch a fish like this. Which in a lot of countries they just eat it. This is undersized for our country. But a lot of people have no problem with eating that one. So there we go, black bream. Oh my god, I thought it was a shark. Black bream, look at the setting against that cliff there. That is fabulous. Back you go, my boy. Look, that's where I was. Tea and sandwiches. I've got to get a bait on. I bet I've not got many of these bits of manky old worms. Think, think, Graham. Piece of squid, piece of squid. Let the tea get cold. Hang on, guys. This is a priority now, a priority situation. This is, uh, this is the code red. Let's get this a couple of strips there. Code red, man. So all I'm using, look at this, is disgusting. That's purely because I think they're very expensive ragworm. They don't freeze well, but this is the second time, folks, I've been out and managed to pour, literally pour, a piece of manky ganky ragworm onto a small hook. I'll tell you what they are in a minute, the hooks. I'll go through the rigs. <laughs> Not that I know what I'm doing, I've just got that many rods out. Something's got to grab hold, surely. And I'm going to put a piece of squid. Well, I've finally sort of got myself. Well, it's a good job there's only one in the boat. I've virtually licensed to carry six people. Can you, oh, bite on the back one. Can you imagine six people in here with me? There's a nibble on this one. See what I mean? Ha, ah, doesn't matter, we've got a fish on. I'm putting this down as a bream. I wonder if that chumming has helped. And I want to see whether it's on the sloppy old ragworm. There's definitely a bream, it's got that jagging sharp fight about it. It's on a light Namura rod, but it's, when I say light, it's got, oh, it's got plenty of tip, but it's also got a bit of beef down here. You take a quite decent fish on it. So I might, might actually take that squid off and just fire some small hooks down there. This is, looks like a night. Oh, he's going well, he's going well. Look at this. It's a bream. I know it's a bream. Nice black bream. OMG, boys. Oh, that's a beauty. That is, come here, listen. It'll be on the film. That one, boys. I don't want to get spiked. No, I don't. No, I really don't. No, I don't want to get freaking well hooked either. Ouch. There, folks, a really nice black bream about to spike me. Looks like his beachy head in the background there, doesn't it? Lovely fish. Bye. On that bottom, I had a piece of mackerel. It's very, very soft. So I figure they might tug away on a piece of squid a bit longer. Well, this brings back memories of rental boats in Florida. The fish we used to catch, my word. And look at that setting. Hopefully the sun's gonna come out and the wind does not come up any more than this. I don't need it any more than this. In fact, for about 35 seconds, I need no bites at all because I want to finish my tea and grub. Now, depending what this is like, I'm going to put it in front of me this time before I got the rods behind me and actually heard it. Black bream, fish on. Ha! Oh. Mm. I'll run through all the rigs I've got in a minute. Whoop, 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 whoop. Here we go. Right, quickly, while that fish is biting, what I've done here, a fixed spool reel, a Nomura five-piece travel rod. On the end of that I've got a cut down set of feathers there. You can see those. A little bit of squid tagging on the end of some small hooks just there. And I've got a squid jig. It's got 40 on it so I guess that's grams. And I was leaving that down there just bouncing up and down because at the end of the day 
when the water starts to cool off the squid do come around so I've got the chance of mackerel and or squid so I've taken the squid jig off I'm going to talk this way all the time guys facing this way because of the wind if I turn around here is roaring into the mic I've taken the squid jig off the feathers put a little two ounce bomb on there I guess baited up the bottom three feathers and I'm going to drop those down as well just to see if there's any more black bream down there I might as well go for these I don't see the need to put a flowing trace on the bottom there's no reason for that I don't think if I'm getting starting to get a few bites on a what I call a pattern oster rig like this it's so easy to fish straight up and down so that one can go in here if I put these like this I gradually gradually get myself organized you see what I mean I got that helps hold the river what's this what's that doing there who the hell screwed that reel on the... That's just... That's sad. Some beginner. A couple of rods up the... Uh, up the front. Hello, 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 hello. I believe a customer is on the way. Oh yes, there is a creature there. Why have I never come down here? And I'll tell you what, I was a guy, I think it was on... Where was I fishing? I was doing a shore fishing film. I can't even think where I was. Oh, this is nice bream. This is this is better action than I've had up my end around the Isle of Wight all year. But look at the clarity of the water. Lovely and clear. In fact, the guy said it's a bit smoky today, Graham, but it's lovely and clear. And do you know what? I'm catching fish in clear water with that setting. It don't get no better than that. Mike wants to come down and do a catch and cook down there. And I tell you what, I think you get big enough bream that size where you definitely could have some nice bream baked fried I don't know if this is a bream I'm not altogether sure I'm guessing it will be oh look some nice bream some really nice bream you'll notice a lot of the time they do take look at the size of this fish that's a beauty man look at this belly on this one turning around there that is a spanker he's took the squid as well that's a fat fish, man. I'd say that's up around the uh, keeping and eating size. <laughs> you spiked me. You deserve to be there. Yeah, I've, I've tried grabbing these off the deck as well. That's right. Away you go. I want to see what's on these big baits. So, squid's working. Original caught on the worm. I think I'm just going to keep going. I'm hoping the wind doesn't get up and the anchor drags. I just hopefully that doesn't happen. It's only I think a downfall anchor. Oh look, 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 people, somebody watch it. Oh, oh, I can't get this one down quick enough. Go down, go down, go down. Faster. Just get down. Right, you're set. Check drag. Check drag, check drag. <laughs> Is he on? Yes, sir. Uh, what a good job. I took the... T I took the... S oh. Is he gone? He's gone. That's not very nice, is it? You must have seen the bike, guys. Hammering. Put him back down. And I can sit here, you see. I can sit here and survey my domain of fishing rods. Oh! Oh! Jesus! Get... Uh, that was nearly the rod gone. That was nearly the rod gone. Oh, this travel rod is really pretty pokey. Oh, look at this fish go. Why did I discover this at the end of the season and not at the start of the season? All that boat towing I've done going down west, what's the point? Closer to home, probably an area that's not really hammered fish wise, so it's got a good stock of fish. I fancy it for Paul Beagle Shark, I really am fancying it inshore for Paul Beagle Shark with an ebb tide going way across the bay there. Look at this fish. Man, they are some beauties. Bottom hook again, people. All beginners, notice I'm getting a lot of these. I'm getting a lot of these fish on the bottom hook. 
Off you go. Oh, look. One more to the other. Missed him. I've got a bite on here. It's gone around the back of the spool. Is that a tap on there? Somebody watch out, Rob, while I sort this one out. I think that one had a, had a little bit of a nibble. I may be wrong. I'm going to have to cut up some baits here because it's, it's going to get busy. So pleased I bought some decent uh, squid with me, fresh caught. Fresh frozen, obviously frozen. That was a squid jig I was using, trying earlier on. Well, peeps, I might have got you a bit of an angle there. I think I've luckily brought a pole with me and I've jammed the camera up. And hopefully you get a different angle other than the head cam. And I'm loaded up again. Oh my word. What could I have done the rest of this summer? I bet this is lovely out here in a really nice summer. Well, you probably can't get the boats, but they're probably all booked out. In fact, when I was there this morning, somebody else was phoning up and obviously thought there was a gap in the weather. I've got a feeling I've got another line here. It's coming up pretty dead. This does not feel like... This got a sort of dogfish feel about it. This one doesn't actually feel like... Oh, I got that one right. Doesn't feel like a bream, and it's not. But listen, it's another species on a light rod. On a slow day, the humble dogfish has saved many a fisherman. Oh, it's quite a big dogfish, actually. There we go, peeps. The humble doggy is here as well. Funny how, look, they tie themselves up in a knot like that. It looks like he's sleeping. He's ready to put a postage stamp on and, and send him to Australia, look. He's totally alive. Get him. More fish. More squid. Do you know what's amazing? I'm actually easing down the sizes of the squid. The strips I'm putting down there. And they definitely still seem to be taking it off. I have actually done very well. Oh, little tip with these travel rods. They do tend to twist a little bit. It's fine if you're lure fishing, you're just casting and retrieving. But when you're messing about in the boat a bit more, I've noticed that any sort of sideways action does, because they're big rings here, does twist them around offline a little bit. That one seems to be held over quite a bit. And I think the tide's flowing now. I'm going to put a bit more of that uh, chum stuff in the water, I feel. Man, I just love to have rod holders. Boom, boom, boom. So I've got them all up like that and I can work properly. Mind you, doing okay. I'll put this here to stop it sliding. Check this one. I've got a feeling they're stripping the baits as well. So I've got to keep an eye on it. The tide is definitely pulling now. Oh, there's another boat just come out. Just working right in by the cliffs. Maybe he's going bass fishing. I think they go bass fishing here quite a bit. What I do is my conga baits are down here and I try, sometimes I cast a long way. But a lot of time I find the fish will come up and nibble behind the baits and you will get small fish. We used to make up what's called a stinger rig. A little small hook behind a big hook and then the big fish still take their big hook, obviously. But you can pick up the extra fish when they come in to feed on the big bait, they just see this little piece of bait about six inches behind. I may do it later on, I'll see how I go. I feel I'm not getting enough at the moment on the small fish bites. Well, I don't need to at the moment. Right. Ah, oh, this fishing's exhausting. People think you come out here and just, oh, it's all relaxed, you just sit back and wait for a bite. Well, you can do that if you, if you want, but I don't. I want to catch fish. I go fishing to catch fish. Keep checking baits. Now this one I had a whole scat on. I've noticed I haven't had a touch on it. I think I'm going to go to whole mackerel. So I've only got a limited time. You pay by the hour on these boats. Huh. Well, it was a whole one pound scad. That tells me how many bream are down there. Look what they've done to that. They've left me a chewed up skull. That's all that's left. So that's a perfect reason for using that stinger rig. 
with a small hook just to the back of the big bait. My bait is pretty rank, I have to say. It's like thawed out, thawed out, thawed out, so I know it's going to get shelled really quickly by all the uh, bream. I've got a feeling I might even be on bare hooks on the other big baits. Right, over the side again. Big thing is don't drop down your baits too fast, especially big baits on a short boom because they'll go around the trace and spin and you'll catch nothing. But just let it go down, take a few extra seconds to get to the seabed and then hopefully you should be in contact with everything. It's all laid out with the lead here and, and the bait's down tied of the lead. I'm going to check these others while I'm at it. Lovely beach in there. I think they call that, well I don't even know what they call it that one. I better not say. Somebody said, oh it's not that called that, it's not called that. Well, the tide has definitely picked up now. I've had to change leads. I'm going to uh, put a bit more of this chum over the side. The other guys must be trolling for bass. They just came right up to me and trolled past. They're pulling lures, I guess. They're probably wondering what the hell I'm doing because they're gawping away, wondering what's going over the side and seeing the bream come over. Listen, it can't do any harm. A bit of chum. Oh, what a jellyfish down there. Gonna have to get my underwater one out. I'm gonna have to change camera lenses, people. That is a thing the size of a dustbin. That is ridiculous. I can't show you with that camera, but it was. <laughs> if, I, look, if I said a jellyfish is that big across the head and that long, I wouldn't be kidding. Whoa. It's either the tide picking up or I've got a customer. It might be the tides picking picking up. I feel no bites. I've had a bite on this thing. And I've had a bite on that thing. What the, what the? Nothing on this one. Probably had the Probably had the bait off on that one. Anyway, I'm going to check this one because we did have a bite here. I'll put big baits down, I'm going to try them first. Holy cow, oh, I'm loaded up with a big fish, I'm loaded up! Big fish, oh my god, don't go in the rocks! Don't go, oh Jesus, this is a big fish! You're going to have to trust me with this, I've had a lot of big fish on this rod. This is not a black bream. This is not a black bream, guys. We've had fish to 140 pounds on this rod, tarpon. Mike's had a big one on this rod, so I know the power of the blank. I think I got him off the bottom. Oh my word. I'm all a quiver and there's a bite on the... Oh no, oh no. Oh, he's taking line off me. No, don't go down, please. Just let's see one good fish. Come on, baby. Come on. Just, let's just have a decent start to the day. It's beautiful sparkling sea. It's a bit bloody rough, but still, what can you do? White caps over there. But there's a fish on the end. This, boys, I can almost guarantee you, is a congreal by those head shakes. And it ain't five pounds. This is in a self-drive boat. I'm now wishing I hadn't thrown out that. Oh, I don't want him around the other line. Who's the idiot that put all these rods out? Who is the idiot? Smith, get in here and sort this stuff out. I'm going to move this one up there. It wouldn't be uh, totally awesome if it wasn't a mess. Quick swig of this. Wow, did you see that splash? I'm losing. I'm losing, I'm losing. 
I'm losing. Oh, I'll keep the pressure on. I've got a little hand jaw gap in there. I'm hoping I've got it in my belt, so I'd nearly always go fishing with it. This is a congre. <laughs> oh, look at the white coming. Oh, buddy, I got me some colour there. Holy schmoly. Oh, <laughs> he's ripping me out again. This ain't a small fish, boys. This is not a small one. There he is. Oh, look at this thing. What? Oh, God. Check this puppy out. He's just jaw hooked. Oh my God. Don't do it, Graham. Don't do it. There he goes. Oh, it's tempting to put the underwater camera on. But listen, you know I've called it, people. That is a big, big conger. What's that on there? Oh, it's a macro. Can you guys see this thing? That's the best part of six feet long. I wonder, I wonder, dare I, I have got the jaw gaff. I have got it. This is a risk. There we go, losing the line. There's no rod holders in it, that's the trouble. I want him lower to get away from the propeller. If I grab the leader, it will be all over by the shouting. Let's have a dig around. I nearly always put it in here. I nearly always put it in here. There he is. I've got it, okay. Now, this could be uh, bordering on the suicidal. You were totally awesome. We're gonna give it a go. Get those feathers out of the way, gotta clear everything. If he stays on, he'll be lucky. Should be a two-man job, this, people, by the way. Kids, don't try this at home. Okay. See if I can ease him up again. He's cranked a bit of line off. It could all fall off, but at least you've seen the fish. This is a release gaff, by the way. OMG. Check out this puppy, boys. This is a totally awesome. Oh, look at this one, Pete. That is worth coming down here. Getting out of bed early for. Oh. These fish is. Oh, he's over 30. That is. Look at the size of this one, people. I don't know whether you're going to get much of this in the camera. But. Oh. I'm going to put his tail on the deck. I'd say he's over five and a half feet long. <laughs> what a session. Black bream and a huge conger. How am I going to get him back in? Okay. Don't panic, Mr. Manry. Here he goes. Check him out, peeps. That is. I'm going to try and get him. There he is. Just going to release him. There's a release gaff. Watch. And there he goes way back down. 30 pound conger in a rental boat, a self drive. Get real. I can see High Sea Drifter being on the open market. Boat going cheap. Wow, let's get that bait down again. Fish on, boys. What? Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, I want a bite on the other one. This feels again dead, it does not feel like a bream. I've noticed since that tide's picked up, the bream are gone and the dogfish come on. 
and they will plough their way through my bait, I would guess. This one I'm casting way back down the down the bat. This might be a bream, no, I feel a kick. Oh no, no, I'd say I'd say this is gonna be another black bream. I do like this rod. Oh, it's gonna be a double of bream, is it? It looks like another Oh, there's some big bream. Absolute size of these fish. I mean. The average fish here is just way bigger than up my end. I'm talking the average. OMG people. The average, the average bream. They're all pretty much around this size. So if Mike wants to come and yeah, okay. Got your ticket. Mike wants to come and do a catch and cook. There's plenty there that size. Well, I had a boat come right out. I can't tell you how close. I don't know what they think. You've got the entire ocean here. They've gone now, thank goodness. Gone off fishing for the fine sea bass, I think. Trolling for the sea bass. Got one rod. I thought, well, good luck. It's beggar's belief how close they came. 30 feet, 30 feet. The whole ocean and parked up 30 feet, dropped the anchor. Crikey, I could have thrown them a spare sandwich. Anyway, the tide is cranking. It's absolutely ripping through now. So something I hadn't even looked at in my quest to find some good weather, and, and hopefully it was going to be a good weather slot, which is, it has fined off the wind, I give it, it's dropped a little bit, but the tide is steaming. So I forgot to ask, neap tides, spring tides. Here we go, here we go. I haven't had a bite for ages. Just a couple of little tips. There we go, there we go, see him? Probably a doggy, but I'm now heaving the rods way back. I must have had 20 bream, really, really about the best bream fishing I've had for a long time. I'm gonna crank on this fish. Oh, oh, I don't feel like a doggy. That is a long, long way back. Maybe it is a doggy. Maybe it's a doggy in one of those, oh no, it's cut that dead doggy feel about it now. Probably a doggy, but listen, it's a fish, it's a fish. I haven't had a bite for a while. <clears throat> what I have done, what I'm winding this one in because it's a long way back, that kept clonking anyway. So to give me a bit of different ground to fish over, rather than remove the anchor, I put the tiller arm in and I've just tied it off at an angle to push the boat across so that might push it 20 feet off the station. So I'm like this if the, if, if the, if the rudder's dead straight, but I put it like this and the current will push me across and just give me a little bit of different ground to fish over. This does actually smack of a dogfish. But listen, I'll take it. Yeah, I didn't bank on the tides being quite so hard as this, I have to say. Although I think he said up to three knots, but is that on a neat or is that on a spring? So next time, try and get the weather. Yes, yeah, doggy, I think. Trying to get the weather, but make sure I get the weather on. Oh, I've got my other line, I thought it was too heavy with the small tides maybe. He's come clear. Come here. Look at what Mr. Dogfish is mullering. I mean, a half a mackerel. If you hold them like that with the tail, 
and the neck you can unhook them they don't wrap this tail around here and score you pretty cool eye even though it's shut back he goes boom straight down to annoy another angler probably off the beach tonight I think I'm going to heave this one way down tide again. I know, look, I know I only got a doggy there, but that could have been the difference. And it's got an extendable butt here, look. Lock and twist. Gives me good leverage for casting. And I can get a good heave ho, and away she goes. Boom. And then, obviously, I can drop it back in the tide, close this back up, twist it, lock it, and it's short for fighting a fish in down here. It's like that. I don't think they make them anymore. There's another boat over there. Please don't think I'm catching tons. Just whole ocean is yours. Right. I feel I'd like another conga. It seems everybody's just trolling for mackerel, probably to eat the non-existent mackerel, or of course is the area for that fine sea bass that restauranteur species that was invented it's a bass it's a bass there is no such thing as a sea bass especially a fine sea bass i've caught some fine sea bream i've heard them referred to as sea bream as well i have had some fine sea bream and occasionally i get so if you went in shore i get some fine sea rockling and sea pout and there's a sea bite Draw back on him. Bump. See the lead hit then. Do the drag up. Hopefully he'll come back. Well, he won't. Yes, he's there again. I've got him this time. One of the advantages of braid, people, <clears throat> is no stretch in it. So if you tug at this end, you should set the hook at the other end. Oh, watch this. This looks like double trouble to me, people. Uh-oh, let's put one down. Been there before with other species. <clears throat> Look at those cliffs. I love the way they stop there, white, and go red there. All the way down the coast, red, 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 red cliffs. Just up here, white. I wonder if that is a reflection of the Jurassic coast with the dinosaurs. Did the dinosaurs live on the red? or the white is that mark at the end of it. Geologists, geologists and teachers out there and historians let us know the difference between white and the red. Demarcation zone, by the way, oh, I've got my other line, that's why. Is that village in the valley over there? So you've got to ask yourself, let's get that one out of the way first. Lovely breed. You've got to ask yourself, did mankind build there for some particular reason? Look at the size. This is a very, very good average size of bream. Honestly. Uh, lovely. Stop it, stop it. Not tiny ones which I've been getting up my way. Stop it. No, you are a naughty boy. Ouch, look, ouch, ouch. And look at the hooks I'm on. I'll show you what they are in a second. There's a fine sea bream that would have been lovely in a restaurant and cost you an arm and a leg. So Mr. Sea Bream goes back to the sea. The best thing about fresh squid, as you can see, lead at the bottom, and there's my baited hooks, same size of hook all the way up. Now I could drop it down here and bounce it back, but I'm taking a bit of trouble to lob it as far back as I can, and then the tide will take it away. Drop it down. You can drop a pattern on the rig down quicker and it won't generally tangle up. But if you have a running ledger, whoa! <sighs> that was a fish on there. I know he's still there. Let's put that one down. That one is down. Keep it low. I feel the fish is still there and the tea, the fish is still there. There is some excellent bream fishing down here. Obviously, they don't get the hordes of commercial netters that they get up my neck of the woods, and you can see the difference, can't you? Really good bit of action, bit of sport fishing. They are indeed one of the hardest fighting fish, size for size, Bream. 
Provided you don't have a huge heavy lead on, I've only got I think three ounces, four ounces. The rod is very light, but oh, he's coming to give my wrist some dingo. This might even be a bigger one. Occasionally, you'll get a double on bream, two at the same time, but I haven't had that yet. Wow, this one is heavy. It's coming in heavy. I don't think I've got any other lines. Oh. There he is. And no mackerel. Sometimes you'll get mackerel on these rigs. Here he comes. Oh. I like the colours around their eyes. That's right, I like that, that blue line there. And you can get it, you won't see it. You maybe see it there on their back pins there. Just there, spike, little spikes, 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 everywhere. Treat with caution and respect. And away. You see there really is an added advantage when you have your own boat, or indeed you hire a boat like this on your own, because I can do what I want. The bites have gone down, big time now, the tide is ripping. I am actually holding the bottom, but way, way back. So I'm just waiting for the tide to perhaps ease. I might get a little bit of slack tide there and pick up one more fish or two more fish, but I've had an excellent time. So look at this weather. If I just sit here dozing, I love it. I'll be doing it on my boat. So I thought there's a nice flat bench here. I might as well chill out while I can. And of course, I've just got to turn my head. Was that a point? No, but all boat anglers can tell you it's just something about you know being out on your, well not necessarily on, on your own but it's a nice bit of peace and quiet being on your own bobbing around the old man in the boat business, the old man in the sea. I'd like to hook a mile in I must admit. It's banging around a little bit but it doesn't bother me because I'm used to small boats. That's another thing those guys who get seasick all oh, get seasick in a boat well Trust me, I've been seasick, of course I have. I don't think there's anybody been at sea that probably hasn't been seasick. I know I know a couple of skippers, right, all their life on the sea, 30 and 40 years on the sea. Almost every day going out in horrendous waves sometimes. How do you know when they're sick? On the car ferry, <laughs> going from Ireland. <laughs> Great big, huge car ferry, because it's a totally different motion. And I find, rather than a big oily motion, that I really, really get sick. Well, I've never been sick, touch wood, plenty of wood on this boat, uh, when you're on a boat on your own, because at the end of the day, you're in charge. You can turn that key, you can go home when you want. You can go inshore, you can go to shelter, you can call it quits. But you're stuck on a charter boat, you're stuck on a charter boat. And it is one of the most horrible feelings. And of course, just when you think you're about to die from seasickness, you realise it's worse than death because you ain't going to die from seasickness. <laughs> You're just going to be sick again. Huey and Ralph are well known to all sea fishermen. For the people who don't know, Huey, Huey, Huey and Ralph, Ralph. Huey and Ralph are the nicknames for sea fishermen when they're dispatching their breakfast over the side. Who are you looking for? Huey, Ralph. That looks like a bite. Well, boys, I can't be a million miles in guessing this mark. If it is indeed a mark, it's open reef because there's a charter boat that's come alongside now. One, two, three, four, five people on it. He's anchored up not more than 40 yards from me. Am I 40 yards the wrong side or 40 yards the right side? He's obviously not bothered about the fact the tide is rip roaring through. Right, bait check time. See there, the tide is a cranking. What a good fortune that I bought. A, just a few sort of eight ounce leads, because I would have been stuffed otherwise, I wouldn't be able to hold bottom at all. And you can see the lines are streaming back. Let's get those baits checked. I've got about two more drops down before I'm out of bait. 
this just goes to show you really how fickle the sea can be. Just cast your mind back to how I was pitching around this morning and look at it now, it's just dropped away to nothing. Glassy calm here, practically glassy calm. The tide is still cranking. I'm hoping it's eased a tad, I don't know. I've got about one more drop of mackerel left that I can drop down to the bottom. And then hopefully the smell will come off it and uh, I might pick one more bonus fish up. I must have had another 10 bream after I've had my siesta down there, as you can see. But look at it, I mean, this is why we come sea fishing, guys. What I do find curious, very few seabirds around, nothing on the surface, no mackerel. Generally, you'd be fishing like this with these paternoster hooks on the bottom with tiny bits of squid on feathers, you would pick the odd mackerel up. And, you know, the guy said it's just shocking for mackerel this year, and it has been for, what, five years? I'm going to say the last five years. But look, what a pleasure to be out on the briny a day like today. That I actually don't sell my boat because these are the days you want for shark fishing. Haven't seen any fish come out over there. Mind you, haven't seen any fish come over here. I've had a few doggies as well. So I've had a good day, really. But you know how greedy we get. You know what it's like. You just want one more fish, one more fish, one more fish. Oh, look at that. That's the giant one. That's the giant jellyfish. You might, might be able to see it. I've got polarizing glasses. Big, big things going past. While we're waiting for a bite, even the bream have gone quiet now. So it has a key start and a button. Turn the key on ignition, press the button. Pretty well idiot proof, you'd think, wouldn't it? Forwards on an accelerated throttle, neutral, reverse on an accelerated throttle. It generally, boats don't start in gear. In here, is the old, these are things are so reliable, it's unbelievable. They use like no fuel, diesel. Uncle Brian had one of these Yamaha diesels, I can't tell you. I think it filled up about twice a year. And it has a kill switch just down here on a spring there, which shuts it off. Got a nice fan belt, new fan belt by the look of it. Obviously I've got to maintain these things, they're higher boats. And a straight drive shaft, guess, through the middle there. So there you go. All pretty basic, but basic works, doesn't it? And here is the bilge. The bilge is the bottom of the boat underneath the boards where if it rains it goes in there or if there's a hole in the boat, God forbid, water comes in. You can pump it out with this up and down like this. I've already done this three or four times. So here you've got a hand pump, bilge. A pair of oars. There's the Rolox at the front. Way at the front, I wonder where that is. I guess to pick up that seat over there. I've never, normally I've, I've rowed from midships on boats. I've never rowed from the front, so trust me, with the tide running at the moment, you're not gonna be rowing anywhere except that way with the tide, I should think. Waste of time trying to row into the tide. I would row across the tide, try and pick up a lesser track of tide down the inside and work my way in there. Hopefully, I don't have to get to the oars. Yeah, a nice little boat. Now this would be, where it rolls a lot, it's obviously, I think I mentioned, mine's a planing hole. So an engine like this, you could put a huge engine in here. It's never going to go fast because it can only displace a certain amount of water. This, this type of boat is pushing through the water like this. That makes sense, it's pushing through the water. I'll tell you how to imagine it. This is all for the beginners and for the non-boaty people. Imagine being in a swimming pool, you put your arm underwater, right? and you try and rip it around underwater like that. Well, that's displacing water, and that's sort of what it does. Now, if you come across the top, just on top and float your arm there and skim it across the water, obviously you can go much faster. So the principle of, say, my boat, High Sea Drifter, is a planing hull. It comes up out of the water and skims, majority of the hull is out of the water, across the surface, so it does 30 knots. This one might do a displacement of, I'm going to say, six to eight knots. I don't know, there is a maximum sort of displacement speed, I think. Well, it's actually getting later in the afternoon. I'm giving it about eight minutes and then I'm going to put the last of my decent baits down. What <laughs> decent? I took them out of the freezer and put them on the floor and left them there four days in my workshop. Fish on. Fish on down the back. Or off, because he saw the camera coming. Hammering bite. Anyway, what I thought I'd mention is you've got these. Let me show you what this is, because a lot of people find it curious 
that all these fish I'm throwing back, they can't understand it, people in foreign countries, why are you throwing good eating fish back? And that's because we have to have what's called a size limit. Because if we killed everything, and listen, the human race does suffer <laughs> unlimited greed, and would take everything, and in other countries have taken everything, which is why if you go on holiday abroad, sometimes you catch fish that are tiny because there's nothing left. So we have size limits here in the UK, all of which change like yo-yos, but I'll just show you one that was given to me by fisheries people, and it gives you an idea on, say, for instance, those black bream, which are edible, but they're not, I don't feel, the right size. Quite a few of them were big ones, but we, if I get another one, fingers crossed, we'll measure it on the chart and have a look. So let's just take a look at one of these charts to give you an idea on size limits. As I say, foreign countries, some have different size limits. Other, let's say, more basic countries, you're going to take everything. My God, where did that go? Don't lose those bits of squid. This is the last bits I've got. OK, now, don't take this as gospel. This is in the UK. This was given to me by a fisheries office from IFCA, whatever that is. Oh, it says Inshore Fisheries and Conservation Authority. All undersized species must be returned to the sea immediately. The retention of undersized species is an offence. A bit like the old parking tickets in the seaside. Anyway, you can, this is a sticky back one. You can stick it, say, along there, you know, if you've got, you've got your boat. But it's sort of pointless because they change all the time, don't they, size limits? So here we go here, look. Black bream or black sea bream. Oh, my God, the black sea. Where's the sea bass? Oh, they haven't called it a sea bass. That's good. Obviously, this wasn't printed or made up by a restaurateur. 23 centimetres, which is handy, and that's normally, that's the overall length, sometimes other species to the fault there. 23, well, that's quite, that's there. Look, I've had some good bream today. It's close, so if I do get another one, let's measure it, and we'll see if it would have been good enough for the frying pan. It looks like I had a nibble on that one. There we go. Little tap there. Maybe, maybe. Maybe we get to measure one of these bream for you. He's there. He's on. He's on just about 30 bream I've had now. Right, let's just check this puppy out and get an idea on the measurements. That tiller arm is so annoying. I've tried to tie it with a piece of uh, my pull cord from my outboard, which for some reason is in my tackle box. Well, I suppose for emergencies on my boat. I'm trying to just clonking and bonking away there. But it's not working. Right, let's just see if we can get this up. If it is a bream, and it is indeed a bream. Now this, you think, most guys abroad are going to say, wow, it's a really nice edible fish. It is. It's, of course you can eat it. Of course you can. But not in the UK. We're going to check this one. Oh, it's a nice one, actually. Right. Oh, come here. I'm going to say that's probably close to a keeper. Right, here's the chart. So we're now going to get slimed up. We're looking for... I'm going to say this is a keeper if I wanted to. There's the nose. Look. Just so you witness, there's always going to be somebody on the keyboard whinging and whining here in Britain. There's the nose. That is 30 there. So that one is for 23. That is definitely a keeper bream there. A keeper bream. In fact, I'd say almost a load of those are called today keepers, but, but, I'm putting them back. Away. And within 30 minutes, the wind's changed again. Gone back to where it was up in there. I guess that's northeast. And I think your man's got his anchor stuck over there. He is not going to be a happy bunny. I just hope that's not a portent of me getting my anchor up because I've got one, two, about four minutes left. I've had another three or four bream. I've got well over 30 bream now. And I think I'm done. I've got to allow for this wind coming. I've got to go back in against it. I want to make sure, as the saying goes, I arrive alive. So I think it's time to give it that five minute warning and crank up. Neutral. I can't give me hand. That's why I like to hear. <laughs> Right, winding up, let the engine warm up. Oh, it looks like I've got a bite on every single rod top like this now. <laughs> well, it might be noisy, guys, but I just cranking up. I thought I'd show you this one. Just as I'm going to wind up, 
another one, nothing like the size that I had before, but I finished off woo, with another conger eel. I just got a feeling I'm packing up when they're going to start biting. Come here, you.